Well, thanks, Eileen. I like Thank Renee you, Brown. Yeah, that's great. Nancy O'Brien's on board, too. Well, Nancy, good to see you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> a little rough today. Hey, uh, hey Nancy, I want to remind your husband that your birthday is on Valentine's Day and that he has to get two separate gifts, one for Valentine's Day and one for the birthday. Oh, my. He never remembers. I'll have to let him know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double doozy. It is a double doozy. Well, uh, you know, I'm just on top of everything today. I just wanted to help you out. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. You've saved, you've officially saved my bacon. Awesome. Awesome. I knew you, I know you knew that. And I know that you've probably been out shopping all weekend. Um, Let's see. What time does Rotor end? I got to get out the door. <laughs> <laughs> they all open right. at 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to remind everybody that I am recording uh, today's meeting so that you can uh, access that if you, if you want to, you know, replay and, and see all the, the fun comments and things that we do in our Rotary Club. It's also available for members who are not able to make the meeting today. Um, and we've been posting those on YouTube, and so I will continue to do that, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows and is aware that I am recording the meeting today. Um, we've got, uh, we've got some, well, we're supposed to have some guests today. Um, is uh, David Leviton here? He's our guest speaker. I don't think he's here yet. Okay. But he should be joining us at uh, at any point now. Okay. And George Bowden from the Everett Club is he uh, is he on here? I think um, uh, Jim was going to have him join our club today and give us an update on some things. Well, if he joins, I'll I'll uh, I'll find him. So anyway, Jim is George Bowden going to join us today? Uh, yes, I, okay. he said he was and. Uh, I told him that he'd come on before the speaker, uh, so he's probably, uh, he'll join us in a little bit. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then um, birthdays. Uh, today is Steve Hobbs' birthday, and I would, you know, sing or do something if he were here, but since uh, he's uh, working so hard down in Olympia, we won't sing for him, but we can all, you know, wish in our heads, uh, uh, Senator Hobbs, a happy birthday today. Uh, I'm hoping he's enjoying his time down in Olympia. I'm sure he is. There's probably nothing going on. Uh, all right. Um, spouse anniversaries. Uh, I've already mentioned that Nancy O'Brien uh, has her birthday on the 14th. And Sam Milt's birthday again is on the 20th. Don't forget. Sam, does he get two separate gifts like Nancy does? Yes, he does. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, one for Valentine's Day and one for the birthday? Yes. Awesome. Oh, great. Oh, boy. Did you just apply the pressure to Kevin? <laughs> Sam, it's, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Because you get, you, get, you get two and you get to knock them out all at once. Exactly. And then you're good for the year. Yeah. Yeah, one Christmas. shopping trip. That's the good news. Right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. No marriage anniversaries. Rotary anniversary. Uh, Don Iverson just had his two-year anniversary on the 13th. And Larry Saint, 13 years on the 18th for Larry. Good job, Larry. Um, uh, had a great board meeting last night, um, and uh, we got some things to share about that today. So we'll start off with Gary, Secretary's report. Yes, we did have a great uh, board meeting last night, uh, and our next board meeting will be on Thursday, March the 11th. Uh, so uh, a lot of things uh, coming down. It was one of the more exciting board meetings uh, that we've gotten into a lot of detail. And... Um, I don't know if we want to mention that we got two new members, but Ron can do that, or you can do it, or me, whatever. And just a reminder, dues are out, and if you haven't paid, please do so. And my check's in the mail. 
<laughs> I heard that one before. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> kind of like you got two presents, right? <laughs> hey, I do have two presents already wrapped in everything. Already wrapped? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're way too organized, girl. Well, just it's the beginning of the year. By the end of it, it's all out the, the window. <laughs> yeah. Cool. The checks That's in it. the mail, does that come along with Happy Valentine's Day? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> All right, uh, Treasury's report, Chris. Okay, so uh, in the club, we have a total assets of $27,145. Liabilities to Paul Harris Foundation, $1,608. Unrestricted net assets, $14,000 and $40. And net income year to date, $9,152. And for the club, the total liabilities and equity is $27,145. And in the foundation, we have total assets of $141,708. Restricted assets of $48,967. Unrestricted assets is $50,664. Uh, the endowment $62,795. And we have the food bank sitting there at 15,000 for a total of those combined of 77,795. Net income in the foundation year to date, 26,976. And uh, the liabilities and equity is $141,708.98. And that's it. So you're saying and we're rich. I wouldn't say that. I say we're doing fine. Okay. <laughs> Get too right. zealous. What's the distance between fine and rich? I don't know. Yeah, I know. Couple, what is it? You know, couple well, half dollars? Not, yeah, a couple dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Chris. Yeah. Um, my report, um, as uh, I said earlier, great board meeting last night. We uh, did, spent a lot of time discussing ways to enhance our club, even during um, the time that we're meeting during COVID and starting to think about, okay, so what is it going to look like maybe to transition out of uh, distance uh, meetings and into some in-person meetings as we go through the phases and hopefully vaccinations uh, will be coming our way for everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know that uh, we, we are uh, still in phase one, but phase two is coming up here pretty soon for vaccinations. Actually, it's phase 1B, um, which I'm in that phase, which will be nice. Um, and as we get more members vaccinated and uh, as we start thinking a little bit about um, uh, bringing people back and, and we go through the washing phases, I'm hoping that we can get back together pretty soon and all have breakfast together. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. The other thing we talked about is how can we take what we've learned during a uh, distance meeting uh, in the pandemic and apply it to uh, enhancing membership for the future. We had a long conversation about that um, and talking about uh, live streaming and making our club accessible to members who may not have the time uh, available to uh, be at our uh, present at our club meetings at 7.30 in the morning. We also talked about um, ways that we could uh, um, have alternate meeting times where maybe in the evening, a couple times a month or one time a month, we, uh, we haven't really decided on that or anything like that. Um, um, but, but uh, you know, have an evening meeting where um, we can socialize and then also, uh, you know, recap uh, the, the regular uh, rotary meeting. And I think that would be a good way to, to get, um, members engaged, you know, and, and I think one of the things that has kind of brought that to light is that, you know, the largest employer in Lake Stevens is the Lake Stevens School District. And since we've been in the pandemic, we've had a number of teachers join. Well, once the pandemic ends and we're back to in-person instruction, Kristen and Kyle and Connor and, and, uh, and maybe even me, I don't know, will may not have the opportunity to, to be as engaged as we are now. So, just discussing ways that we can increase not only membership, but engagement of members in our, in our club activities uh, outside of meeting time so that we can um, 
you know, increase our membership, but also, you know, stay a healthy and vital club. I think it was really cool uh, last week or the week before Rochelle talked about um, how during pets, she learned that a lot of clubs were losing membership and we're not. We found ways to stay vital and, and we need to continue to do that um, as we transition in, in back to another direction of being in person and uh, making sure that we can be an equitable club, that, that we provide access to all of our members in, in uh, ways that allow them to participate fully. So that, that's, I think that's a big discussion. That's a real great discussion to have. And we, we will continue that. And so Keith uh, uh, from, uh, with club services and Ron from membership are gonna, um, and along with some other of us are gonna get together and talk about ways that we can do that and then bring our plans back to the club. So uh, that's exciting. I mean, uh, you can't go through something like this and not take away some real strong understanding about how you can improve your club, which I think we're gonna be able to do. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. All right. Um, so Ken, Ken, can I say something? Uh, you know, it was mentioned last night that the, uh, the YouTube meetings, if you watch a YouTube meeting, uh, you get a makeup. You just have to tell Gary that you, you watched it and he'll give you a makeup. So that's a cool way to, to complete your attendance. So that's cool. And also George Bowden has uh, joined our meeting as well from the Ever Club. Welcome, Great. George. Welcome, George. Hi, George. Hello, I, I wanted to join your meeting this morning just uh, to thank you for your contribution to our community garden, greenhouse garden project in the Dominican Republic. I, it's been pending so long, I don't know when your donation was. It's gotta be at least two years ago. Um, but we put up $15,000. This was after the pilot project, project. We had a couple of trips down there, settled on this project that was requested of the Rotary Club of Dahabon, uh, right along the Haitian border. And we went down and uh, with our pilot grant, which was a total of 10,000, we met with the Rotary Club and told them we'd selected their project, but it was a, it was a matching grant project. So I asked if, if they could come up with $100, we'd match it with 10,000. And they were, you know, what, really? You know, so with that money, um, we had hoped to get 10 gardens uh, going. And these are not insignificant projects. Each garden is about 35 square meters. So they're large, they're, they have poles and netting and, and it's all enclosed. So sunlight filters through, uh, water filters through, but it not enough to, uh, harm the crops and it keeps out insects and critters and things like that in them. And the height of the uh, netting on the top is probably, I'm guessing, 15 to 20 feet. Um, they're all individually built. When we met with them, they said, well, uh, who, who's going to, is this like a community garden? And I said, it's, it's your project, it's whatever you, you'd like. So they settled on individually owned gardens. And the idea was that they would, as they repaid the money from excess uh, cash generated by their crops, we'd start a revolving fund and build more, build more gardens. Um, it got off to a good start, but the end result is those loans essentially morphed into grants. We have six gardens from that original project up and running. Um, and I, it's been over two years that maybe three years since I've been back and I went back because we wanted to expand the project. I went back to the club and they wanted to know how we thought they'd done. I said, just marvelous. This, this is terrific. And I said, that, uh, if you, you know, this is a matching grant. And I said, we would expand it, but did, could you guys come up with $300 to expand it? And they said, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And I said, well, if you come up with 300, we'll match that with $100,000 and they practically fell off their chairs. Um, and it's been a long process from then till now because all of that hinged on getting a global grant from RI. Um, but Ed Peterson's valiant efforts at keeping this going and solving problems that were raised by RA, the biggest one was we had to have a certified micro lender uh, handling the the funds and he finally found some one that was qualified. But just to summarize, 
with this expansion, we pit, pitched in $15,000. Your club pitched in $5,000. South Everett Muckleteo pitched in $5,000. Everett Port Gardner pitched in $5,000. Then District pitched in $30,000 as a part of the match. Um, Rotary Foundation pitched in $45,000, and we got a couple of other. In the District, the Rotary Club in Dahabon ultimately uh, uh, pitched in $865 in their district, $1,000. So we have now on deposit $106,865, um, which will be sent. Some of it's already gone down there. Um, and essentially, we're acting as a guarantee. So a bank there, Ben Fondessa, will be uh, loaning money, generally about $1,000 per garden. And we will release funds sufficient for, for 20 gardens. And when they are constructed or the funds are spent, we'll release funds for another 20 gardens. So this should fund an additional 60 gardens in about nine different villages in that same general area. Um, and we can't wait to get back. There's some more uh, work to be done. We're beginning to call Ed Peterson the Lord of Leverage uh, for turning all that money around and getting a grant. But my recollection is that you had an Interact student who went down on a work trip probably three years ago, something like that, Yeah. which was all part of this, very uh, helpful. And, I had an, another trip planned a year ago like that, but then with the virus, we had to cancel that. But in the meantime, we didn't know if we were gonna get this grant. Um, and I think personally, I was about to throw in the towel and say, if, if we fund that ourselves over three or four years, we might be able to provide the, the same funds. But, um, and we were fortunate because RI has changed their rules. So they're not as generous as they are. Um, and I think I just got something where they're cutting back their global grants by about 10% requiring a larger contribution. So I think we were fortunate to get this in and keep it alive uh, at a time when uh, we could really leverage their money. So I just wanted to thank you. Uh, we'll probably put together some video presentation down the road when we have more work done and more gardens up and running but it significantly increases the nutrition for the participating families and provides enough additional crops that they can sell in the market, which uh, there's a farmer's market, I think twice a week in Dahabon. So once again, thanks so much for your contribution. Uh, since I'm hearing that your club is so rich, there will be many opportunities to uh, add to this project or think of things that you might like to do down there because you can get involved with healthcare education or anything else, but this provides the foundation moving forward. And what we've got probably uh, nine different partners, you know, in this project, but I'm most pleased that uh, one of those, though not a signatory to our MOUs is the Peace Corps, which has promised to station a volunteer uh, solely with a primary function to work on this project for the next six years, which would be three volunteers each for two year terms. And that's not something that the Peace Corps often does, even with a group like Rotary. So I'm very pleased that um, the Peace Corps in the Dominican Republic felt this was a, a worthwhile project uh, to make a, a significant commitment to work alongside us. So again, thank you very much. Thanks, George. Um, it's nice to know that our, our investment is paying dividends for the people in the Dominican Republic and yay for us. Yeah, I thought yeah. I could go to the casino and really double up your money, but uh, huh. the, the way to win there apparently is to not go. <laughs> yeah, that never works out well. Parlaying doesn't, it's not a good strategy. Yeah, but, but thank you for that update. Anybody have any questions for George? Um, as we before we move on, George, I might be uh, contacting you just for a little bit more in writing, so I can put this in uh, on our website. Okay. The uh, the other thing I can do, Gary, if you send me an email address, we did a press release, but it was truncated in the Herald a couple of days ago. But I've got, I can forward that to you from our. Uh, 
Walt Green was, does our press work, and that'll have that'd, more detail. That'd be perfect. Thanks. Yeah. And George, uh, this is James Monroe. If you wouldn't mind sending that press release to the Peace Arts Journal, and we can profile that. I think that's already that. underway. Uh, Thank you. And also to the Rotary Magazine. I'm not sure what they'll print, if anything, but um, that's going out. And, and then, as I say, I think we'll have a larger piece, especially once we get some results and can show not just that we've got nice gardens that folks have built, but really to see the result of that. Basically, with, with the bank handling the funds, they'll be formally loaning money to everyone who qualifies. And to qualify, the people have to apply. They have to have 40 hours of training in how to be a farmer. Um, and then there's a, a program to repay the loans. We guarantee if they fall short, then they can tap into our funds to uh, pay off those loans. But as that money is returned, uh, that's the idea is to have a sustaining fund that will fund more and more gardens going forward. So we'll keep our fingers crossed, but I think we've got the right people in place uh, and we will probably be hiring a project manager through the Rotary Club, uh, at least on a part-time basis, because we found that was something very important. If it's beyond the scope of a local club like that to, to manage this, oversee it, um, and we need somebody down there on the ground. So we're going to work on that next. Sounds good. Thanks, George. You're welcome. Let's, uh, let's move on with uh, some more reports from our uh, board. But, uh, Lori, do you have anything to report today? Past President Lori? Did she jump off? I saw her, uh, and I don't see Rochelle Ploger on. She's not on with us this morning, so we can't get a, a, a president-elect's report. So let's go to committee reports. Keith, what's going on? What you have for breakfast today? Uh, Eggos and eggs. I was spent all evening last night after the board meeting loading up the trailer so we can go camping this weekend. So all the food's in the trailer. Oh, where yeah. are you going camping? Uh, just up to Deception Pass for the weekend. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, that'll be cold. Yeah. Yeah, but the trailer's warm. Elisa keeps it like 75 degrees in there, so be mostly shorts and t-shirt weather. There you go. <laughs> yeah, right. I heard they had the big windstorm blow a bunch of trees down, so it might look a little different when you get there. We were actually there during the windstorm, and Elisa was like, you know, do you think we should be worried and I said nah everybody else seems fine so we're probably fine and then we got up the next day and there was trees down everywhere it was and you said and you said no I'm in insurance yeah <laughs> I said we'll just get a new one it's fine this thing's insured <laughs> at least you'll be by the beach yeah hey Lori did you have anything to report All right, I had a dog crisis. Um, <laughs> no, nothing to report, all good from the past president office. Except for the dog crisis. Yes, well, we, we've averted the crisis now. So. Oh, whew. Somebody Thanks. dared to walk in our yard. Oh, boy. Ken, did uh, you talk about Arsenal baseball? This is Rochelle. Well, you're on, Rochelle. I didn't see you. Yeah, I was having a mute issue. Well, yes. No, we have not. And you know what? We're going to we're gonna allow you to do that. Go ahead and talk about Arsenal. Okay. Um, so many of you guys know that we have been a big supporter of our local Arsenal baseball team. It's a select team, I guess you could call it. Um, there's four different age groups. There's tryouts. I don't know if there's cuts, so I don't know if we could really call it select. But it's a great group of young men and families. Um, their president came to our club a few years ago and we gave them a donation. What's unique about them is that they combine sportsmanship and leadership on the field with community service. So they've come back to us again this year um, asking for a donation. They have just started playing in person. They just held their first scrimmage. I went back through their website, their Facebook page and their Instagram and they have been when they were allowed to in 2019, 
they did a lot of service in our community, including the work at the community garden. They helped distribute flyers for empty bowls event for the food bank. Um, lots of projects like that that they could do in addition to playing their tournaments. And um, they had at that time they had a Rotary Club patch on their uniform. So they've come back asking for a donation for this year. And at the board meeting last night, we discussed it and we approved a thousand dollar donation, which puts our name on their website and on their team banner that they'll display at tournaments in the dugout. Um, and it's contingent on them filling out some paperwork for us, but um, our application is very easy. So I'm sure they'll complete that and we'll be able to support them again in 2021. Thanks, Rochelle. Yeah, it's pretty exciting uh, to help help those young uh, folks uh, do what they want to do, but also see them involved in community projects in our community. Uh, yeah, it's a really good combination of skill sets and leadership for those boys, and it's great for our brand, I think. Eileen, community services. Yes, yeah, so <clears throat> we have a tentative date for the interact cleanup uh, for March 20th. Kristen and I need to connect to kind of organize and figure out start times and stuff, but we're super excited. Also, I wanted to put, <clears throat> put it out there to any of our club members. Um, Chris Jacobson, you were on my mind. As far as if you guys need help with volunteers, deliveries, that kind of thing, please reach out and let me know so I can bring it to the club so we can get support. Um, we're looking for um, to add a few new activities. Um, so please don't hesitate to let me know so we can get it out. That's all I have. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thanks, Eileen. Tracy International. Nothing new with International. Um, I, there's another board meeting that I actually plan on attending this time. I think I have the right date this time. Um, uh, just something with Cocoon House. I have reached out to them. I think we're going to be, Rotary will be providing dinner for the students on, or the kids on Saturday, tomorrow. So depending on the snow and all that, and see if I can figure out how to use Grubhub. <laughs> so we'll see. Or Dave and I might be going and delivering food. So we'll see. That's all I have. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, interact. Um, I don't know if you saw that Kristen put in the ch uh, chat that uh, that um, Interact and Ro our Rotary Club will be um, organizing a street cleanup, and that's the street, the 113th uh, Avenue, the, all the way to 92 from from the high school parking lot all the way to 92 on March 20th. So if you have March 20th open, you may want to join the Interact students and uh, and Rotary Club members. And possibility that Chris might be contacting uh, the Boy Scouts. Uh, we have to kind of keep it limited, maybe, uh, to, to do that. So, um, Ken, is that the, Ken, is that the same one that Eileen was just talking about? Yeah. It's yeah. Coined. Okay. Yeah, 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 it's the same one. Okay, good. All right. I, oh, I, I wrote it on my calendar and I wanted to make sure. Kristen, it sounds like you're kind of organizing that. So I'll have uh, one of the scouts contact you and see if it's going to work for them or you or whatever. You may have to email her, Chris, because she had to get off. Um, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, vocational Lance. All right. So I'll try to be quick. We met as a committee on Wednesday evening. We had 10 people attend, so great attendance. And... Uh, Sorry, Joyce, I'll get you in next time, I promise. <laughs> um, so just some dates. Uh, February 22nd, we hope to have the application up and live so that the students can start to access that. Um, some dates for you guys to think about. Um, we'll be looking for judges. April 14th is the date that we've chosen to kind of distribute the packets like we've done in the past so that you can do your reading. And the good thing this year is because of our timeline, we have given about a full week, um, actually nine days for the judges to actually read and score this year. So it won't be such a crunch as it was uh, in the past. <laughs> and then a tentative date for all of you guys to think of, it's our regular date, May 21st, uh, regular Friday meeting. 
Um, depending on what the world looks like at that point, that's the date that we've got tentatively scheduled for our awards breakfast, where we usually, in typical times, bring the students in and, and give them the awards in front of the club. So stay tuned on that. Those are our dates that we've got going. Thanks, Lance. Rochelle, anything on public relations? Uh, nothing on public relations. Thank you. All's Thank you. well. No budget. Jim, Jim Foundation. Uh, yeah, uh, both foundations are doing really, really well. So we're we're on track, looking good. Awesome. So um, we're running a little uh, long on time, and I and I just want to make sure that we all get an opportunity if we want to. Um, uh, but I want to get our speaker, um, J Mr. Leviton. Are you here with us, Dave? Dave Leviton. Yeah, I'm here, Ken. Did I say that right? Uh, Levit. Yeah, Levitan. Levitan. Okay. Sorry. Um, no worries. Club, thank you for joining us. Um, I'll have. How, how long do you need uh, to speak today? Um, I'm going to try to get through. I just have a short PowerPoint. Uh, there was a presentation that I had given to a group that Don was involved with, and I'm just going to try to breeze through that. And then if you wanted to leave any time for questions, but I can okay. get through it as quickly as you need me to. Oh, well, no, uh, well, I don't want to rush you. I just wanted to um, see how long. So I'll give you a control of the screen um, or give you co-control of the screen. And uh, we'll do if you had a happy buck that you were burning or desiring to let us uh, take from you <laughs> to spend the day, hold on to it till next week. Um, and David wasn't here to, to fleece us with fines anyway. Uh, so, um, we can do that next week as well, but, uh, hey Ken, we make, make sure you find yourself for, uh, skipping the membership, uh, committee yes. meeting speech. So, oh, crap. uh, I'll, I want to say, uh, welcome to Connor Davis and Kyle Strand, uh, our newest member. So, other than that, you're fine. I'm fine. <laughs> and you're fine. Thank you for doing that. And welcome, Kyle. And, uh, Thank and you. the other pr perspective future uh, Rotarian there. <laughs> Got a little ways, but I think it'll happen. <laughs> Raise them right. You can tell that Kyle's wife is an elementary school teacher with the with the, um, alphabet next to him there that's awesome got him already learning that's great hey ken ken nancy i'm sorry to be a pain but Go ahead, I, I gotta pay 20 dollars happy bucks and a 20 dollars fine because nancy's getting a seahawks golf bag for her birthday <laughs> <laughs> and for valentine's day thanks to john spencer she's getting an engine hoist <laughs> so you did your shop in September 26th, I see. You know, there's no clubs in that bag. That would be a nice addition. The bag's nice, but, you, you know, it doesn't really work without the clubs in it. Clubs come next year. Yeah, it's a, it's a gradual present. Yeah. Nice job. Maybe You're a romantic guy, I can tell. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn this over to Don. Don, do you, would you like to introduce um, David for us, please? Why, well, certainly. It'd be my pleasure. Uh, David is uh, with the uh, Planning and uh, Development Department at the City of Lake Stevens. Um, as uh, many of you remember, we had Barbara Mock on a few months ago, and she was with uh, the County Planning uh, Group. And so she talked about countywide, uh, uh, we'll call it growth uh, plans. Uh, and I thought it'd be interesting to have David come on and, and get a little bit more focused about what, uh, what's going on in Lake Stevens, where we're going and, and how we're getting there. So uh, as uh, many of you know, planning is different from the building department. Uh, when you apply for a permit, you're basically saying, this is what I want to build and exactly how I want to build it. Uh, whereas planning is, is, is the step before to, to find out if you can even build it to begin with. So it's a very important step in the, in the development process. So with that, David, 
How about it? All right. Thanks, Don. So, and, and I have made you co-host, David, so you could you can share okay. your screen. Great. Let me. <clears throat> All right, so thanks, Don, for the introduction. So again, David Levitan, I'm a senior planner with the city. I've been with the city for about eight months. Uh, my family just moved back to Snohomish County after seven years down in Oregon. So I'm um, happy to be here today. I'm going to focus kind of pretty high level today, um, kind of a land use and zoning 101. This is a presentation that we gave to the Waterfront Residential Task Force, which Don served on, which was looking at potentially expanding permitted land uses along the waterfront. Um, so I'm gonna try to keep it pretty high level. And if you have any questions toward the end, I'm happy to answer those. I'm sure that with uh, both our current and past mayor, as well as other city uh, representatives, I'm sure you've been able to ask a number of questions as well. So, um, Kind of we're going to look at things such as the Growth Management Act, the city's comprehensive plan, um, our zoning code, and then how those kind of interact with some of the efforts that maybe Barb, Barb Mock talked about as far as some of the countywide planning policies um, and some of the state legislation that kind of establishes and mandates how we need to plan in Washington, Snohomish County, and locally in Lake Stevens. So kind of at the highest level, the Growth Management Act is something that was established uh, back in 1990, so a little over 30 years old. It, it's basically the, the state legislation that requires the city to develop what's called a comprehensive plan to help manage our population growth and to plan for future development. Um, also required to look at things such as natural resources and wetlands and steep slopes to make sure that there's um, consideration of the natural environment as well as the built environment. Uh, there are a number of Growth Management Act planning goals that factor in. I'm not going to go into detail on all of these, but they cover a variety of different topics such as urban growth, protecting the environment, transportation, um, shoreline management, which obviously is a pretty big issue in Lake Stevens. Um, and then within our comprehensive plan, there's a number of items that were required by state law to include as far as being mandatory elements or chapters of the plan, um, land use, housing, capital facilities, transportation, um, economic development, parks and recreation. Um, there's a couple different ways that the comprehensive plan can be updated. Um, next week, we're starting our uh, public hearings for the 2021 comprehensive plan docket. Basically, the city can amend the plan once per year um, through what's called a docketing process where the city can propose amendments and then we also solicit amendments from the community. Um, so if you're ever looking at, you know, changes within the comprehensive plan that you're wanting to see as part of the city's annual docket, we open that up for the month of January where people can <laughs> propose amendments. So that period just closed, um, but moving forward, if you have anything related to the comprehensive plan or the future land use map, um, which establishes different types of uses that are permitted throughout the city, January is the time to get that to the city. Um, there are a couple of things uh, that the comprehensive plan need to be consistent with. Um, in addition to the Growth Management Act, um, the Puget Sound Regional Council um, represents the kind of four central Puget Sound counties, uh, Snohomish, King, Kitsap, and Pierce. Um, and so they develop a plan that basically then the individual counties develop a series of what are called countywide planning policies, which um, I'm not sure if maybe Barb got into it all. Um, but so the county updates that. They're actually in the process of updating that right now. Uh, the city's been participating in that process. And then they're also getting into uh, developing countywide growth, growth targets. So the county, kind of all the individual jurisdictions work together to um, basically take some of the regional growth targets and then delegate that to the county and to plan out um, where that growth potentially is gonna happen if there's adequate land within either incorporated cities or what are called our urban growth areas to accommodate that growth. Um, and so those are efforts that are going on right now that'll be featured in some minor amendments to our comprehensive plan next year. 
Um, the city's comprehensive plan uh, was first kind of the, the first formal plan was adopted in 1994. Uh, there have been a couple of major updates in 2006 and 2015. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the city updates the plan annually, kind of more minor housekeeping amendments on an annual basis. Um, there are also what are called sub-area plans that in areas where the city is planning on focusing growth and development, um, that the city has developed kind of specific sub-area plans to plan out the uses in those areas. So if you look at this map, um, the city currently has three sub-area plans. So the 20th Street corridor uh, is a plan that was adopted back in 2012. At the same time, there was a plan that was developed for uh, Lake Stevens Center, so kind of the central area here. Um, and then back in 2018, the city developed a plan uh, for downtown Lake Stevens in 2018. And so if you'll see kind of the majority of the city is uh, on the land use map is in yellow. Um, that's residential and primarily uh, single family residential. So that makes up by far the vast majority of the city. Uh, the orange is a little bit higher density residential development that's permitted. The red is commercial development um, as far as um, what's permitted there and what the future land use designations are. And then the, the blue over here is where the city's industrial land is focused. Um, so over in the Hartford area. Um, and then purple is kind of mixed use development. So you'll see that downtown in some of the areas within the sub area corridors where kind of a mix of residential and commercial development. Um, so the way that the comprehensive plan map works is that looks at kind of the future land use designations and then that's implemented through the city's zoning map. Um, so the city then establishes a number of zoning districts that regulate what types of uses are permi permitted, what the development standards are gonna be. Um, and then looking at this map, the last thing is that the, these areas in gray are what's called the city's urban growth areas. Um, so those are areas that the city is able to annex. Um, and uh, so basically the city is actually pursuing two different annexations right now. Um, there's a larger one that would, um, what's called the Southeast Interlocal Annexation. It's this area north of Rodora and then south of Rodora down to 20th Street. So that's about 500 acres, about 3,000 residents, um, and that annexation will also annex in the entirety of the lake, um, and which is currently uh, within the county and managed by the county primarily, although the city does a lot on the, on the surface water and, and lake management side of things. So that'll formally bring Lake Stevens into the city of Lake Stevens. Um, I'm not gonna to touch much on this. This just was a little bit on the 2015 update, which was the last major update. It basically gave the city the opportunity to look at kind of where the city was at um, and how it wanted to move forward um, and changes that needed to be made to the comprehensive plan. And then I'm gonna get a, a little bit into um, just the changing city of Lake Stevens and what there is as far as buildable capacity and development capacity. Um, so if you look at this map, this is a map of of annexations. As of 2002, uh, the incorporated city of Lake Stevens was obviously pretty small and over the last 20, 20 years, especially the last 15 years, it's gradually moved its way as the city is annexed basically around the lake, kind of moving from northeast to the west um, and around the lake, the largest annexation being in 2010. Um, and so there are a couple, this map's a little uh, no, I guess it's still current. Um, so there have been a couple of minor uh, annexations recently. This is the area that's being proposed for annexation. And then there's also this Machias industrial area, which is about 67 acres that the cities uh, should be mo moving forward with annexation of that actually within the, about the next month. Um, so if you look at the table, the cities obviously as it's annexed in areas, um, it's been growing pretty rapidly. Um, both in acreage and in population. Um, it's not just annexations that have caused the city to grow. As the city is, as annexed areas, there's obviously been a lot of development going on as well. Um, so this, that's reflected in the city's population. Um, and as far as kind of looking forward and what we do as planners is basically the working with the county there and PSRC, there are a number of growth targets that are set. Um, 
for each individual jurisdiction. And so the population target for the city is about 39,000. Um, we're well on our way there. If you look at the number of units that have been built over the last, especially eight years, that have been about 3,000 units built. And that's probably a little, this was from last summer, that's probably closer to about 3,300, 3,400 units um, that have been built in the last eight to nine years. And so the city's been growing um, between 500 and 1,000 residents per year. And that's basically just from development as opposed to from annexation. So when you factor in annexations as well, obviously the size of the city has gotten much larger. Um, as I mentioned, the urban growth area um, also has population targets. So those are those areas that are outside of the city but eligible for city annexation. Um, the current Southeast Center local annexation is gonna kind of scoop up um, the majority of that area, um, but there'll still be the capacity for a uh, few thousand people as far as future population targets in the remaining UGA. Um, and this map, I don't wanna get into too much, but this basically just shows kind of where there is development capacity built based on what's called our buildable lands report. Um, so basically this is just a model that looks at a, a number of different factors and anticipates where there might be development capacity in the future. Um, so if you look at the red, that's remaining buildable lands. This is back from 2018 and, I'll, and some of this will have been um, taken up by uh, more recent development proposals. But um, it shows that really there's, there were about 349 net buildable acres of uh, capacity back in 2018. So when you think about it, that's, that's not a whole lot. I mean, the, the majority of that sea of white um, is kind of no infill or redevelopment capacity. So it's, it's pretty limited in scope as far as where growth is anticipated to be focused in the future. Um, and then these are just kind of showing the, the interaction and the relationship between the land use map and the zoning map. So this is the future land use map uh, that's related to the comprehensive plan and then that's implemented through the city's zoning map. So you'll notice that the color schemes are pretty similar. Um, kind of the, the sea of yellow is single family residential. Um, and so um, the city in recent years has including within the residential, the single family residential areas has seen that there's probably gonna be some need for some additional infill development. So the city over the last couple years has adopted a few ordinances um, to amend its zoning code to expand the, the types of residential uses that are permitted uh, throughout most of these residential districts in yellow. So that allows for things like duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, um, attached townhomes to be located subject to our infill housing regulations. So there is a little bit more flexibility on the permitted uses in areas that used to be primarily um, exclusive to detached single family residences. Um, I got into this a little bit, but um, some of the recent changes to the zoning code have expanded the opportunities for kind of generally what are called middle housing. So those are the duplexes, the triplexes, fourplexes, townhouse, townhouses up to four units attached. Um, so that's permitted within the majority of our uh, single family residential zoning districts there in yellow. Um, those, there were some discussions about expanding those to the waterfront to allow for these types of uses. Uh, the recommendation from the waterfront residential task force that Don was a part of and that made a recommendation to planning commission which was then forwarded on to the city council was that for now we should not be expanding um, the permitted uses along the waterfront given that it's a relatively unique um, environment. And so th that's something that the city opted not to move forward on. Um, and just a little bit on the lot sizes for things like duplexes and triplexes, um, you do need a slightly larger lot size to have that type of development in the city. So say for a fourplex, if if the minimum lot size was 6,000 square feet for a single family home, um, the code at a very minimum requires 175% of that for a fourplex. So you need at least 10,500 square feet to build a fourplex in that same zoning district. So those are kind of the, the high level. I kept it um, primarily to kind of a planning and 
Zoning 101 if you have specific questions about uh, projects in the city. Um, you obviously have a number of good resources as far as city representatives, but I'm happy to answer any of your questions as they relate to specific uh, planning and zoning projects. Um, and yeah, that is my presentation. Great. Uh, David, uh, this is always uh, something that is of interest to folks within uh, the city, uh, and that is the uh, 20th project, 20th uh, street project. Uh, and we're aware of Costco going in. We assume that's still moving forward. Um, how much uh, activity has there been uh, from the standpoint of the other Prod or properties in that area, the interest in, in, in uh, more commercial, uh, maybe some uh, higher density residential, that type of thing? Yeah, so there have been a number of projects in that general area next to the Costco. So the Costco is, as of now, moving forward. There have been um, a couple of appeals that have been involved with the Costco um, at different levels, um, an appeal to the hearing examiner and then an appeal to uh, our local courts. Um, but as of now, they're moving forward with some of the site development work. Um, kind of on that uh, zoning map that I showed, there is an, a kind of a fair amount of what was shown as red on the map. So along 20th and then along South Lake Stevens Road as it approaches uh, State Route 9. Um, some of those areas have been zoned for commercial development and we we definitely have had some some interest. We've had a number of pre-applications, basically the, the step before someone formally applies for a land use application and building permits. Um, there at South Lake Stevens Road and State Route 9, kind of the northeast corner, there's been a good amount of interest. Um, and I think that there's a, a project that's looking to move forward on that. Um, and there, there are some, um, you know, some of those areas are still primarily residential. Um, so this is a very much a transitional period. Um, a lot of those still have detached single family homes on them. And so it's kind of figuring out in this transitional period. Um, I think there's been interest from developers as far as assembling parcels to allow for kind of more concerted, larger projects. Um, and so there's obviously intricacies and complications involved with that. But there, there has been interest um, in that beyond just the, the traditional detached single family residential that's dominated Lake Stevens for a while. And when you look at some of our sub areas, Lake Stevens Center and downtown Lake Stevens, um, there's been you know a lot of expansion of commercial uses over the last decade, especially. Um, and there's continued interest. We get a new donut shop downtown, so that's nice to have. Um, a couple other uh, uses going on. And so, um, yeah, there by the Costco, it is, it's, I think, serving very much as a catalyst. I mean, when you get a use like that coming in, that people understand that if Costco's coming in, there's probably a reason for that. And so um, we would expect some additional catalytic development to occur. Is there any, um, is there any uh, possibility of, an improvement on the merge between Highway 204 and 20th uh, as it goes on to the trestle. Uh, I know that it would be complicated to fix that, the, the awkward uh, short, short range merge there without being part of the big project, which is probably years away. But has there been any discussion of any modest improvements there? Um. Yeah, I mean, there's been some discussions. I would need to check in with our public works director um, on that as, and our city engineer as far as the extent of those discussions. I haven't been so much privy to those, at least in my relatively short time with the city, but that's something that I'd be happy to look into a little bit more. Great. Hey, hey Don, I can answer that. So um, Senator Hobbs has a transportation package he's trying to work through. Uh, right now, part of that is a $1.8 billion uh, trestle project. And the first phase of that project would be to do the east side of the trestle, getting on and off the trestle. Second phase is the west side, and then third phase is the lanes in between. So it, what you're talking about is part of that first phase if that package goes through. Excellent. Good. Uh, 
there was a question in the chat that Lance asked, uh, how does planning for parks play into the planning uh, around the lake for uh, urban growth? Yeah, so there's, um, you know, at the very high level, we have a parks recreation and open space element that really guides our park planning effort. Um, Jill Meese is our parks uh, coordinator. Um, she's also a recovering city planner. So she very much has the background in city planning as well. Um, and so, um, yeah, when we're looking at, um, you know, future growth, we need to account for things like schools and parks and the city tries to maintain a, a, a certain level of service as far as the different levels of parks. So you have your kind of regional parks that apply, you know, that attract obviously a much larger population. And then kind of as you get um, kind of more focused to individual neighborhoods, you have your neighborhood parks. And so the city is very actively looking for opportunities to expand park development, especially in the southeast portion of the lake and some of the where we've annexed in areas relatively recently and where some of the maybe the county's uh, level of service standards for parks were a little bit lower than ours. So we're wanting to make sure that we um, afford opportunities uh, for recreation and that we uh, really raise that level of parks uh, service in those areas. So um, the city's kind of very actively pursuing acquiring um, some additional areas for parks development. So David, is there interest in building motel hotel project in the city or next to it? Um, as far as if there's been a interest expressed by private developers or if the city's wanting to pursue that well, are private developers interested? Uh, I have not been involved with any discussions. I don't know if, if Mayor Gailey or former Mayor Spencer have in the past. Um, that's something I can look into. I, there was some discussion as far as where, um, as part of the council's recent retreat, um, as far as if there um, might be some opportunities for kind of a more regional attraction, such as a hotel. Um, I am not personally aware of if there are kind of any advanced discussions from any, you know, hotel developments, um, but that's something I can get a little bit more info on. So, so Larry, I'll, I'll help you out on that one. Um, there's nothing, there's no talk right now of anything. Um, we've got to up our game on a couple of regional attractors to be able to attract that, uh, hotel area and um, I think that that becomes recreational uh, sports tourism sorts of activities that's why we're working hard on creating some open space and some fields and and uh, that sort of thing to try to attract that uh, hotel idea so our big lake doesn't attract enough people it just attracts a lot of boats <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Really quick, Brad, have you made any progress on negotiating with Everett over the water lines? Um, I have a meeting with Cassie on next Wednesday and she doesn't get to go home to Everett until she says yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. And obviously, from my perspective, the management of growth is really huge for our school system. Um, and uh, we need to continue to look forward and know that increasingly plots of land in Lake Stevens are not only difficult to come by, but more and more expensive. So we talk about that all the time, just staying ahead of that growth curve. It's really a challenge um, when the, every plot of dirt that I see uh, has houses going in on it and all those houses have big wheels. That's how we determine who's going to be in kindergarten the next year. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and so it's, it's, um, it, that's a challenge too. So it's great working with the city on that. Hey, hey Ken, that's a, a good uh, segue. Uh, maybe a future uh, presentation would be the school district's um, plans for additional uh, facilities in the future and what triggers those. Yeah. It's a good point, Brett. And um, yeah, I could have Rob Stanton join us at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anybody have any other questions? 
All right. Hey, great meeting, everyone. Uh, great to see you. Hope you all survive. Hopefully it doesn't snow. I haven't looked outside. It's not snowing yet. So cross your fingers because we've yep. got uh, kindergarten through second grade students coming back on Tuesday. I'd hate to have to have a snow day on their first day of <laughs> school. <laughs> anyway, have a great weekend, everybody. Long weekend. Thanks, David. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks, David. Bye, yeah. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.